Today we will see the next lecture on surface treatments and coatings which is the unit number 4 of the subject manufacturing process 3. Today we will see or learn about case hardening. Prior to the uh, details of the case hardening as you all have learnt about the iron carbon phase diagram or equilibrium diagram. So for the self of better understanding of the process, again we will just go through this iron carbon phase diagram for which I want to know you or I want to show you the different temperature lines which are there in the iron carbon phase diagram. This diagram already you have learnt in the metallurgical part. Still for understanding of this particular topic, we need to have again revise the iron carbon phase diagram. So quickly we will go through the different temperature lines which are shown over here. You can see the temperature lines such as A1, A2, A3, again ACM and different phase phases of this diagram. So here you can see this line indicates this is the basic line that is uh, A1 and A2 lines of 723 degrees Celsius then this is, is A3 line which is at 0.83 percent then this is the ACM line this is the ACM line which is connecting 0.83 to 2.06 percent and these are the different phases where you can see uh, the different phases of uh, this just as austenite, cementite, ladeborite, cementite plus ladeborite all you have already learnt in iron carbon phase diagram in the subject metallurgy. But now why we are going to see this or why we are in need of these temperature lines because before proceeding to the case hardening first of all we will see what is meant by hardening process. So friends, for studying this hardening process, what is there written here, you can see heat above the A3 line. So A3 or ACM line, you can now see what is, where is the AC3 line and where is the ACM line. So heating the component above this A3 or ACM line. And then, sorry. austenization then quenching which is higher than critical cooling rate. Now I am not going into the detail of this austenization and all these things because already you have learned what is meant by austenization. So the process of hardening begins hitting the component above A3 or ACM line then austenization and then quenching. Quenching means immersing higher than critical cooling rate. So certain application demand high tensile strength and hardness values so that the components may be successfully used for heavy duty purposes. So for particular components which require high tensile strength and hardness, this hardening process we have to carry out. So in high tensile strength and hardness values can be obtained by process known as hardening. Now this hardening process consists of the four steps as already I have mentioned here in a single line that is hitting above A3, ACM, austenization, quench, so that is explained over here. The hardening process consists of four steps. The first step involves heating the steel to above A3 temperature for hypoeutectoid and above A1 temperature for hyperutectoid steels by 500 degrees centigrade. So whatever the temperature required, you can heat that is A3 plus 500 or ACM plus 500 that is for hypo and hyperutectoid steels. Once this process is completed, then the second step involves holding the steel for components for sufficient soaking time for homogeneous austenization. Once you are heated that particular steel part for particular temperatures as per requirements of the steel such as hypoeutectoid or hyperutectoid, then the second step consists of holding that particular component for sufficient time, soaking time or holding time for, to become homogeneous austenization. Then the third step involves cooling 
cooling of that hot component at the rate just exceeding the critical cooling rate of the steel to the room temperature or below room temperature that is after holding for sufficient amount of time then immediately you call go for cooling of the part and once the final step involves the tempering of the martensite side to achieve the desired hardness as you know when you cool particularly a particular object by heating to a particular temperature and sudden cooling is there then there is a transformation takes place and here you can know the martensite is the hardest of all the substances so so conversion of austenite to martensite this is the process and that is known as hardening so detailed explanation you can see in the coming sections so in this hardening process the austenite transformation to martensite and this martensite structure improves the hardness that means once you go for cooling you have to cool it immediately that is why it is given as exceeding the critical cooling rate so that you can get the austenite to the martensite and this martensite is the hardest structure so this martensite structure gives you the hardness so in the hardening process which involves quenching and tempering so tempering we will going to see in the coming lectures as already you have known what are the tempering and what are the different types of tempering that is os tempering and mart tempering already you have learnt in the metallurgy so just i am revising this what is the hardening process and prior to this we have seen the iron carbon equilibrium diagram or the phase diagram and once you know this hardening process then you can understand what is actually mean by case hardening process so what happens during quenching so during quenching outer surface is cooled quicker as all you know once you have at a simple example uh, that uh, whatever you, if you heat a particular and if you immerse in the water you can see that the outer surface gets cooled first and then the inner part gets cooled so in other words the transformation of austenite is proceeding at different rates hence there is a limit to the overall size of the part in this hardening process so this is how hardening occurs but first you can understand whenever you quench or you immerse it in a particular quenching media the outer surface is cooling the uh, it is the first point of cooling and then it progressively goes at the center so the transformation of austenite is proceeding at different rates hence there is a limit to the overall size of the part in this hardening process so this we have seen now what are the types of this flame hardening what is the meaning of flame hardening simple torch you can use for hardening process already you have seen this in everywhere or whenever you are visited in the industry if you have seen that a particular part is being heated with the help of the torch that is with particular type of a flame or oxyacetylene flame you can see that is nothing but the flame hardening process in flame hardening is the simplest form of surface hardening heat treatment so this process consists of heating the large work piece such as anything you can see crankshaft or gear or cam or any other complicated cross section by oxyacetylene or axi fuel blow pipe followed by spraying of jet of water as a coolant so here this process so simultaneous processes are going on once where you can start heating with the help of certain oxyacetylene or axi fuel blow pipe and immediately spraying of water is there so that the part set as we have seen in the hardening heating to the particular temperature holding for the particular time and sudden or quenching in the particular quenching media here what is done one side you start heating and similarly at the same time you apply the spray or jet of water as a coolant so what will happen immediately that part will cool that means there is a conversion of austenite to the martensite takes place after hardening reheating of the parts is carried out in the furnace or in the particular oil bath at about 180 to 200 degree centigrade for the stress relieving because what happens whenever the part is suddenly cooled what will happen stresses are induced in that particular parts and to remove that stress what you have to do again you have to reheat the part to remove the particular stresses because whenever the part is suddenly transformed from one phase to another phase there is a possibility of stresses induced in the part which will have some different effects so to remove that particular stresses what is to be done here you have to reheat the part which you have already cooled again reheat the parts which is to be carried out in the furnace or in the oil bath at a particular temperature which is mentioned for the particular part 
so what is meant by case depth up to 3 mm can be achieved that means case depth means up to which what is the depth of that particular hardening that you can know that is case depth up to 3 mm which can be achieved now here you can see there are four methods which are generally employed for the flame hardening one is called as stationary or the spot that means torch and work that is torch which is used for heating the part and the work the part which is to be heated both are stationary progressive means what workpiece is stationary and the torch moves over the workpiece and the spinning process is what process torch is stationary while the workpiece rotates so so <coughs> here what is meant by if the uh, parts are bigger in size bigger in size so you cannot take that particular torch or that particular bigger surface in that case what is there torch is kept stationary and the workpiece is rotated so that the even heating can takes place and third last point is progressive and spinning which is the combination of progressive and spinning that means torch also moves and the workpiece also rotates this is how these four methods are employed for the flame hardening here you can see this is what it is the principal over here this is the particular part this is the part this is the workpiece and this is the flame and this is the direction of the movement once you start moving this particular flame in this direction immediately which is followed by the spray of water and the part starts heating and this is the heated part this is how that is simple heating process that is also known as the flame hardening here you can see over here sorry here in this part you see here this is the part this is the part which is rotating and also these are the four flames these are the four flames employed and the part is rotating here the flame is stationary and the what will happen here the part is heated from all the four direction at the same time the cooling is going on here also this part rotates and this flame heats here are again two flames are there and which is which are stationary and the part is rotating this is how the flame hardening process is carried out the next part is the induction hardening process now what is meant by induction hardening so induction hardening which is used for local surface heat treatment particular part particular surface heat treatment so it is used to surface the hardened crankshaft or camshafts or crank pins or the axles so in this process heating of the compound is achieved by electromagnetic induction you already know what is meant by electromagnetic induction you might have come across the word eddy currents and all so heating the steel or cast iron by means of the high frequency electric current is nothing but the induction hardening so the principle of induction hardening is that when a compound is placed in the varying magnetic field an eddy current is induced in it and this eddy current produced is used to heat the component so the component heated by induction is then these are quenched or dipped in a particular quenching media so this is how the induction hardening takes place in the flame hardening what is there flames are employed for heating the uh, heating the particular part so in the induction hardening which works on the principle of eddy currents and these eddy current producer are used to heat the components and with the components which are heated then again they are quenched in the particular quenching medias what happens in the induction hardening process a thin hardened layer is formed on the surface of the steel or the cast iron that is induction hardened now the time taken to heat the component by induction is very short because it does not take as much time as required for the flame hardening because here what happens the part is heated with the help of the eddy currents which is for that this process takes short time so it ranges from 2 to 5 minutes so within this short time period the surface layer reaches the upper critical temperature after the component reaches the upper critical temperature so it reaches the austenite temperature that means the temperature above uh, plus 120 above that particular range that is where the austenite starts forming so it is quenched by spraying water since the heating rate is very rapid and the heating time is less the austenitic grain size is very fine so that's why induction hardening if you can see the austenitic structure or the structure of that particular part the austenitic size is a very fine why it is very fine because the time requirement for the heating is rapid and 
sorry time required is less and the heating rate is rapid that's why there is a uniform austenitic grain structure which is a very fine one so here you can see very simple principle of the induction heating how this happens the power supply is deliver current uh, to the induction coil here you can see the induction coil then what will happen the coil current generate the magnetic field so lines of field always go around the coils alternating magnetic field flowing through the part cross section induces the voltage then this induced voltage creates eddy currents eddy current generates heat in the part and in each induction system there are three closed loop induction coil eddy current loop and the magnetic flux as already you have learnt in this particular induction uh, or eddy current formation in the physics so this is just for the information how the eddy currents are produced now the next part just we are going through this electron beam hardening process so this process is used for hardening the components which cannot be induction hardened because of sub part of distortion because distortion takes place due to that particular part so uh, the parts which are associated distorted for those purposes you cannot go for the induction hardening you will go for the another pro alternative process which is known as electron beam hardening process so electron beam hardening is just like a laser treatment which is used to harden the surface of the steels so this electron beam heat treating process uses concentrated beam of high velocity electrons as an energy source to heat selected surface areas of the ferrous parts so electrons are accelerated and formed into directed beam by eb gun so already you have seen this how the uh, sorry laser beam is working similar way electron beam working is uh, electron beam hardening process takes place where the electrons are accelerated and formed are directed by a electron beam gun now the most important three principles or uh, three principal processes for the case hardening now we will see these processes one is carburizing now carburizing is most widely used method for surface hardening method here the surface layers of a low carbon steel which are less than 0.25% is enhanced with the carbon up to 0.8 to 1 so the source of carbon may be solid medium liquid or gas that is means here the addition of the carbon addition of the carbon you have to do to enhance the carbon percentage in all cases the carbon enters the steel at the surface and diffuses into steel as a function of a time at an elevated temperature so carburizing is done at 920 to 950 degree celsius so here the steels already you know the carbon percentage is less so you want to enhance the carbon percentage you have to go for this carburizing process so carburizing can be done by pack carburizing or liquid carburizing gas carburizing and vacuum carburizing there are the different carburizing processes you can go for to enhance the carbon percentage now what is meant by pack carburizing so this method of pack carburizing is also known as solid carburizing so in this process the steel components which has which are to be heat treated are packed with the 80% granular coal that which is the which rich uh, uh, percentage of carbon and 20% bso3 barium carbonate as energizer in a heat resistance box and heated at 930 degrees celsius in a furnace for a specific time which depends on the case depth required what what amount of case depth is required depending upon that the part is to be heated generally carburizing time varies from 6 to 8 hours and case depth obtained varies from 1 to 2 mm so here what is done the part is kept in a particular uh, furnace or you can see box and in that you are adding the coal which is the rich source of the carbon along with the 20% of barium carbonate and that all that particular Uh, particular setup or the box you have to heat up to particular temperature particular temperature means how much particular temperature how much case depth is required according to that you have to heat that particular uh, part and then you have to wait for 6 to 8 hours generally the carburizing time is 6 to 8 hours and the case depth which you require it or varies from 1 mm to 2 mm so here you can very well see over here this is the part which is to be carburized and now this part is kept in this particular 
sealed steel container and this is coated with activated charcoal here is the charcoal you can see over here the charcoal then you are heating that sorry heating to the carburizing temperature so what will happen here you can see over here carbon monoxide gas is circulated around the part and carbon on the surface of the part so in this how the carbon go, gets on depositing in this is known as pack a carburizer pack means you have to pack that particular component with the help of carbon rich substances similarly the liquid carburizing it is known as salt bath carburizing so in this process carburizing occurs through molten cyanide cyanide which is a very dangerous one in low carbon steel cast pot type furnace heated by oil or gas so what is done over here it is known as salt bath carburizing and this carburizing occurs in the cyanide bath or molten cyanide in the low carbon steel which is kept in the pot type furnace and heated by oil or gas now that particular bath temperature is maintained between this given range 815 to 900 degrees celsius so the life of pot depends on the quality of the material operating temperature and the mode of operation namely whether it is continuous or intermittent you are going for the continuous process or you are using after a particular period of the time that's why continuous or intermittent continuous and automatic process gives good end results the bath surface is covered with the graphite or coal to reduce the radiation losses and excessive decomposition of the cyanide so this process gives a thin and clean hardened layer of 0.08 mm thick so this is known as salt bath carburizing in this process what is done carburizing takes place in the molten cyanide and the, that particular bath temperature is kept at a temperature between 1850 815 to 900 degrees celsius and the life of pot which you are using for this process depends upon the quality of the material what temperature you are using and how the mode of operation is that is mode of operation means whether you are going for the continuous process or intermittent process if you are going for the continuous process the results are very very good and this bath surface is covered with the graphite why to avoid the radiation loss and the excessive decomposition of the cyanide the third process is the gas carburizing so this is most widely used method of carburizing in which it is carried out in a retort type sealed quench type or continuous pusher type these are the different types of furnaces which are using for this gas carburizing and the most widely used are retort type sealed or continuous these furnaces are either gas fired or are heated electrically either you can go for gas firing or you can use for or you can use electric furnaces so gas carburizing temperature varies from 870 to 950 degrees celsius so gas atmosphere for carburizing is produced from liquid or gaseous hydrocarbons so how the gas atmosphere is created for carburizing which you can go for the methanol or isopropanol or propane and methane and endothermic gas generator is used to supply endothermic gas one of the recent development in the gas carburizing technique is the use of nitrogen as a carrier gas now the uh, newest developments you can go for the there is a requirement of a carrier gas now you can go for the nitrogen as a carrier gas normally nitrogen gas is used with some minor additives so carbon potential is controlled by adjusting the level of oxidizing constituents so all these are actually my dear friends you have learnt in the metallurgy still we are uh, again uh, we are re uh, seeing or uh, revising these things but which is very very important so that you can have again uh, have the knowledge of this particular uh, hardening processes now the next one is the cyaniding so cyaniding is nothing but also a case hardening process by which a, by which preheated steel steels which are already heated that is all called as preheated steel they are dipped in the heated cyanide bath and allowed to soak allowed to soak allowed to keep over there some particular of time the part is then removed quenched and rinsed to remove any residual cyanide so dear friends this is one of the most hazardous process because as you know the cyanide are very deadly poisonous so utmost care has to be taken for the cyaniding heat treatment process in this this is used for case hardening no doubt about this but here utmost care has to be taken to avoid the contact of the cyanide as you all know which is a deadly poison so what is done over here 
the steels which are already heated that is called as preheated steels they are dipped in the cyanide bath and kept over there for particular amount of time and then it, they are removed from the cyanide bath then they are quenched or immersed in particular quenching media and then rinsed to remove any residual cyanide so this process is fast and efficient it produces a thin hard shell harder than the shell produced by carburizing so whatever the shell which you are producing for the carburizing either by pack or liquid or the gas carburizing even more harder shell you will get while if you go for the cyaniding this heat treatment process and this can be completed in 20 to 30 minutes by several hours the major drawback as i already told you is the use of cyanide which is a deadly poison and the last one we are going to see is the nitriding so nitriding is a case hardening process by which individual parts have been heat treated and tempered before being heated in the furnace that has an ammonia gas atmosphere so friends again in the coming lectures we will see what is actually mean by tempering heat treatment process so already you have seen this so i request you once again to go through this heat treatment processes or there is uh, different uh, austenitic or tempering mar tempering or tempering processes before uh, reading or reading that because you will very well come to know what is actually mean by tempering and the words here you, we are using here case hardening process by which individual parts have been heat treated and tempered tempered means you should know what is mean by tempering before being heated in the furnace that has a ammonia gas atmosphere so this case hardening method produces the hardest surface of any of the hardening processes and it differs from the other methods in that no quenching is required so there is no worry about a warping or any other distortion so friends what you have understood from this so once this case hardening method produces hardest surface because tempering after tempering there is the no requirement of the quenching quenching means you have to uh, dip in a particular quenching media uh, to cool so what will happen at that particular case is so in some of the parts uh, when you are heating to the particular temperature and suddenly you are quenching in the particular media what will happen there is a possibility of distortion or warping of the particular part so this will not take place in case of nitriding because here what is said here individual parts that have been heat treated and they are tempered before being heated in the furnace so that what it saves the process of quenching and there is a very there is not a possibility of warpage or the distortion of the repart this is one of the advantage of